destruction as far as the eye can see after tens of thousands of gallons of liquid propane go up in flames. Plus, Cold War controversy heats up as the University of Illinois boots up the fastest computer in the world. And the plaster has deteriorated over a period of time, and this is causing the pain of the murals to actually release and to fall off. A county comes together to save a piece of their history from the ravages of time. All that and Mr. Roberts points to the future. That's next from the vault. The stories that made news and made history, the places that matter to us, and the people who make Central Illinois home. Join us from the vault. Welcome, I'm Matt Metcalf. Residents of Crescent City in Iroquois County will forever remember one hot June morning in 1970. A train derailed and the contents of several of the cars exploded, wiping out entire city blocks. Channel 3's Ann Anderson filed this report on the 10th anniversary of that explosion in June 1980. June 21st, the first summer day of the decade, dawned in Crescent City. At 6.30 that morning, there was dawn again, with bright skies and angry heat. Freight cars of a Toledo, Peoria, and Western Railroad train had derailed, and that caused a half dozen propane tanks to explode, parts of the cars flying over buildings into homes and fields. That was Sunday, June 21st, and the fire burned until Tuesday, June 23rd, a battle undertaken by more than 200 firemen. George Gokin still lives with the scars on his hands and head from second and third degree burns. He was part of the 20 member Crescent City Volunteer Fire Department that confronted the accident. He runs a gas station at the corner of Route 24 and 49. He was one of the first to see the ill fated train. We uh, were sitting there fighting the fire, and finally we fought it long enough. We thought it would have it about out. Finally, it got the best of us, so we started moving out. Shortly after we started moving in the next tank boat, we had a hard time getting the people out of their houses when it was going on because they didn't want to leave it and they didn't think it was that bad. But I think after the second tank blowed, they decided, most of them, that they better get out of town. Seventy persons were injured that day, but no one was killed. The accident drew attention to the problem of transporting hazardous materials. The propane cars that exploded at Crescent City were known as jungle cars, uninsulated and very fragile. Now insulation is required on tank cars. The Interstate Commerce Commission also requires safer tank lids and shields, but the environmental director from the Illinois Attorney General's office, George Wolf, says labeling is still inadequate, and local people sometimes can't figure out complicated chemical terms. But in all, the state director of the Emergency Services and Disaster Agency, Erie Jones, says we are better prepared for these accidents than 10 years ago. The tracks are still being repaired. The 30 buildings destroyed in that explosion on Route 24 have been replaced. It's been growing, you know, steadily, but not real fast. But we really got a nice town now, and it can compare to what we had before. Today, there is a memorial near the disaster site. Mayor Carly says visitors often come here just to look at the pictures, the pictures that tell the story. One state official said there is no way to eliminate the hazards, only minimize them. He says the problem rests with society and its need for things with chemicals. He said a completely safe system would be possible only if society changes. Ann Anderson, Channel 3 News, Crescent City. Amazing video, huh? Crescent City now holds a fireball festival every fifth year, a big reunion that brings people from far and wide back to town once again.